Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but we'll do everything in DIY and today we have a service call in a pump room. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. Today we're going to be replacing a ton of water gauges for all these pump setups. So they have water source heat pumps here. So they have a cooling tower and they have these pumps here pumping water throughout all the heat pumps throughout the building. Anyways, there's parts of the building here where a lot of these gauges either have failed. Like right here shows zero, it might have failed. But also there just might be no water in this setup, you know? So because of that, they want to change some gauges some water gauges, these specifically. So I ordered the same exact ones. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna replace all of them. And there is 28 in total. If anyone doesn't know how to do this, you're gonna learn how to do it today. Let's just take a quick moment to appreciate this view. I know you guys always like the views I get in the city, but we're actually in Brooklyn right now. And what's better than the view from Manhattan? The view outside of Manhattan with the view of Manhattan. Man, this is amazing. This is seriously, seriously an amazing view. We're in Dumbo, Brooklyn, right there. That is Manhattan. Look at that, we got the One, one Trade Center, the New World Trade Center, amazing. The view of this building is seriously incredible. This building's only a few years old and it has a share of problems, but you really can't beat that view and right down there that's my truck right there <laughs> keeping a bird's eye view but yeah i just wanted to share this with you guys that you guys might find this interesting the pumps that we see are pushing water through this cooling tower here and if we walk across this roof of course we got some crazy big aeon units we actually have a second tower here and it's two cells Oh, they're actually separated. They're connected together. These are two cooling towers and that's what those gauges are for those large pumps. So we're pushing condenser water through it. So that water is being pumped throughout the heat pumps, specifically through the condenser. So we're pumping condenser water through the condenser to cool it off. So we're using water, the movement of water instead of the movement of air. Look at that sky. That's a beautiful morning right there. All right, so we're actually above up here. I want to just give you guys a little bird's eye view here. Let me see if you could even see it, but look at this giant fan in here. There's some serious stuff. So let's get back in there and change those gauges. All right, we are in here. We already got this started. We got Christian over here. He's already getting started with these gauges. Always use two wrenches. All right. So let me give you guys a little walkthrough so you guys can see this building here. Very nice. See, that's our condenser water. These pumps are serious. Wow. This thing is no joke. You don't want to get your hand in there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> or in there. This is the giant motor. There's a shaft here, inside is the coupling, and this is actually the pump. This is a centrifugal pump. We got a strainer for it. We got some valves. Very interesting. I love walking around these rooms and seeing what's going on. Here's the pumps. And let's see here. This is running through with off the VFD. Yes, it is. Power comes in here. It's a control box. Come up. Electrical panel comes in. And we got some giant ABB. VFDs, okay? We're gonna be changing the gauges everywhere, everywhere. And a lot of times, sometimes if you got no reading like here, considering there's at least almost 80 pounds here, could be a chance this area is blocked, so it'll be good for you guys to see this. Don't just think that you know everything. Even me, I still stay a student to the game because you never know, I'm learning every day. And I've been doing this for over 14 years. So, got gauges here, got 
gauges here, got gauges here, we got gauges here. I mean, we got gauges everywhere. Storage tank, this is a filtration system here. I mean, you name it. We got more pumps here. Condenser water, more gauges, more gauges, and another filtration system here. So we'll be replacing all of these gauges. You don't gotta shut the system down to replace a gauge. It's not gonna affect the system. Right here we have a ball valve. When it's parallel with the pipe, that means it's open. So, and of course it has to be open to read pressure. What we're gonna do, close it. Now it's not parallel anymore, right? It's not parallel with the pipe anymore. So this valve is closed. Let's get some wrenches. All right, I'm gonna use one wrench here just to hold back and one wrench here and lefty loosey so you're gonna want to turn this left you got to see which part is the male side left once it's cracked open I could take this off by hand there we go and that's how easy it is to take it out also I give it a little uh, little push there might be nothing here oh I was a little bit more than a push. We're gonna need to clean that up. <laughs> oh man, that thing was like reading not too much. Let me get a gauge. Sure. Let me get the tape, just so I can show everybody. All right, you might need to get a bucket from here. Anyways, I'm using Blue Monster PTFE tape, and you gotta put this on the right way. When you got water squirting out of there like that, and you got all that black stuff out of there, you're good, because so you, you clog up these little gauges here and that's how things start to fail maintenance anyways you're gonna want to make sure you put this on the right way if you put it in the other way while you're spinning it on it's gonna come off all right leave a comment below with how many turns you do this I don't know six usually does it for me six or seven lucky number whatever get it going try to apply that neatly we're gonna spin that on. And you could probably get this by hand. This actually might do it here. Let's see, a little bit of a 45 degree angle. We can open up the water. Boom. No leaks, but learn to use your wrenches. That's that. We're gonna follow the same process here. There's zero here. There might not be any pressure there. And it's really that simple to change these. But guys, we got 28 of them to change. All right, hold back with this one and go lefty loosey. All right, and we're out. One thing to keep in mind, look how clean this is over here. And look how sloppy this is over here. I mean, I'm trying to keep it only on the threads. This is gross work. This is gross work right here. Always flush it out. All right. We're gonna get a, like a plastic garbage bag or something for that for the future. Anyways, let's get the next one in. All right, so we're gonna start here. Put it on the thread. You gotta put this on the right way. So you start like this, and just think about it. You're tightening it this way, right? So we're just going to go around. All right, let's get that on there. Go around here, make sure it's nice and neat. Looks good. Spin it on. To be honest, that actually might do it. Now look at that, now it's actually reading a little pressure. And there you go. That's a beautiful thing right there. All right, so this pump is not operating. Shows there's 80 pounds here and like five pounds there. Let's see what that's about. Maybe I can hook that up right there. Anyways, let's close this up. Try a little bit of a different method. Let's try this one that's kind of empty. 
You know, a lot of these you could kind of just take off by hand. Look at that. All right. Super sloppy Teflon work. Okay, we actually got a garbage bag this time. This is the better bet. So we can open this and let's see. Is there pressure? There's a little something. Okay. Open that up. And we can dump it on the floor by the floor drain. No problem. It's a little bit neater, you know? So you don't shoot this thing across. But what you could do, because in this area I don't want to get splashed, you can get something simple as simple as this, because sometimes dirt gets caught in these little corners. So you could actually stuff this inside there, push it through, ream it out. You could put a tiny little snake, but I don't know what you're gonna fit in these tiny, tiny little quarter inch fittings. Also, I got a little turbo fan, it's an air blaster. This thing is super powerful. I mean, you're gonna do it if it's completely clogged and then you're gonna get splashed. But that's pretty much how you would unclog those. If it was just like a straight thing, you can even get a little screwdriver inside there. And uh, you pretty much be all right. Let's get our new gauge. All right. Get our Teflon tape, our PTE tape PTFE tape start that up and yeah once again leave how many how many turns you guys there everybody has like a different opinion on this I don't know six usually does it for me even seven sometimes if I'm feeling lucky you know what I mean <laughs> this one right here let's get this straight come on this one you might need a like a pipe wrench channel lock to get that going but yeah, you want those all clear we'll wipe them all down when we're, down when we're done open that up that's about correct as far as this Let's see, maybe I could just hold it back with the wrench and just spin it, showing 70 pounds. Yeah. All right. Open that up. And you guys pretty much understand the process already. This thing is gonna shoot out, man. Cover it like this, open it up. Oh, wow. Look at that, this thing got nothing coming out of it. This might be a good example to show what I was telling y'all. Let's see if I can get that in there. That gauge was busted up, it was showing 70 pounds. I was wondering, I'm like, how is it doing that? This thing is off. Let's see, can I get this in? I'm gonna hook this in a little. Come on. It's ten gauge wire. I mean, some of these, there's just nothing coming out. I've seen other ones too, but you see there's a lot of dirt coming out of there. Oh! <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. A little bit of wire. You see? So sometimes when you're not reading pressure, it might not be your gauge. It's just this thing has no pressure coming out of it. Whew, that was gross. You got a nice little bath there. But you see? 
<laughs> it worked, huh? Let's flush this out. Oh, a lot of pressure is coming out of there now. Close this thing. Oh, thing got everywhere. Oh, hope it didn't damage my clothes. It's a new shirt. All right. Dump that. This could get a little messy. Definitely gonna need a mop when we're done. Oh, and a rag. I wonder if the other one's clogged. Sometimes I see this pressure on one side, but not the other. Ooh, probably changed my gloves. Let's get this started. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And that's what I'm talking about. Some of these, these things get clogged. Open that up. It was showing 70 before. Look, it's only 25. This thing's showing five. I mean, we could try to mess with it a little more and see what happens, but you're really not gonna know until you start these pumps. And I'm not trying to change any pumps right now. And that's pretty much it. Just trying to keep it clean. And that's how you change these gauges. We're just gonna keep moving along and getting rid of these old water gauges. Time for a new setup. It's been eight years. Yeah, so we're pretty much gonna move along in that way. Just want to show you guys a little bit extra, but yeah, definitely keep in mind with those tiny little bends like that, because then you might have a problem. And don't put your Teflon tape like this. Put it like this. You know what I mean? And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're gonna continue along, and we're gonna wrap it up. Hope everyone had a good holiday weekend. It's this is Thanksgiving weekend. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as they come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.